during the bulge, command broke down, supplies broke down, morale broke down, communications broke down, everything broke down. It was every man for himself. We were inadequately clothed. We didn't have rubber overshoes. We didn't have overcoats. We didn't have gloves. We didn't have scarves. My boots were so bad, I would strip newspapers and drapery off of the bombed out houses and wrap my feet in it. You were having trouble breathing because the snow was suffocating. And consequently, we lost a lot of men who froze to death. To the gunners, life went on, a round of work and little sleep. The season changed. Winter was a new plague, adding discomfort to danger. There was cold and mud. Through the winter, Germany continued to hammer Antwerp with V1 and V2 bombs. Thousands of buildings were totally destroyed, and many thousand more were severely damaged. People in the city were dazed. Those who had lived all their lives in Antwerp were suddenly lost in their city. The children looked on, not understanding. The wreckage was beyond their comprehension. But the V1 left its mark on them, physically and mentally. Then, in the early part of December, there were five days of quiet. There was no putter of V1 bombs. There were no V2s. The sky was silent. But though there were no targets, the air was charged with danger. This calm was false and sinister. Each man felt it. The enemy had stopped for a reason of their own. That was something to worry about. Then the silence broke. The German high command, realizing the importance of the Allied supply source, poured all its ground strength into a huge, dangerous counteroffensive, the Battle of the Bulge. Antwerp was the goal. Reach Antwerp, and the Allied drive would falter and fail. Our position grew dangerous. Our men were forced back. We lost valuable equipment. The Allies met the drive, throwing everything they had against the enemy, every man, every piece of equipment. Our highly specialized army rushed cooks, clerks, and cartographers into front-line fighting positions. Standard fighting methods were thrown overboard. Anti-aircraft guns fired point-blank into the enemy attack. But although the Allies suffered great damage, the result of the Battle of the Bulge was now clear. Von Rundstedt never reached the city that was his destination. Through it all, the port went on operating. The Belgian dock workers, heroic in the face of constant danger, continued to bring in the materials that were to reach the front in time for final victory. Truckload after truckload rolled through the streets of the city to the Western Front. The offensive we were mounting to the north was suddenly forestalled and set aside. 
As through the rugged, thinly held Arden, von Rundstedt struck. He cut a fiery path through the American lines and sent his tanks desperately driving toward the river Meuse. The night of fog and pale December frost saw the beginning. None foresaw the end. He aimed for Antwerp's harbor through Liège. And all our plans held fire while we bent our strength to curb the Germans in the bulge. a replacement in England playing shove hay penny in a pub. The next day they shoved me in an aeroplane and that night I was fighting Germans and being kicked around. I don't know about the other outfits, but mine was being cut to ribbons. They were dropping all around me. The thing that still sticks in my head is the medics. The only weapon they had was a needle, but they were around right where it was the hottest. You'd hear that yell, medic, medic, and they'd always be there. Our whole division got a presidential citation for what happened up at Bastogne. Even me, just a cook. I'll never forget that old lieutenant running into the field kitchen and hollering at me if and I had any idea how to operate a bazooka. I said no, and he said, well, you're going to learn now, son. I did, and I'll be doggone if in the first shot out the barrel I didn't get me a Jerry Tank. Got interviewed later by Stars and Stripes. They said it was a crackerjack story. I tell it at the drop of a hat. We've been up north where things were a bit static, so we were quite glad to be moved down to the top side of this bulge. Coming down through Belgium, we noticed how scared some of the civilians looked. Natural, I suppose. We were held in reserve for a week, and then they sent us into action. On account of the fog, we couldn't get any air coordination. We sure miss it bad when you've gotten used to it all the way since D-Day. And then on December 24th, like a Christmas present, that sun come up, and after a while, we was giving them the old one-two again. Stopped them dead, finally. It cost us plenty of men, but we stopped them. And we started moving ahead again. The rest of us. 